Okay, we're continuing on where we left off from our previous video where we were looking at this circuit and using the format approach we at node 1 were able to immediately write down this equation and likewise using the format approach at node 2 we were able to immediately write down this equation and this technique works providing you have only current sources in your circuit. Now if you have voltage sources sometimes it is possible to convert them into a current source and then you can go ahead and use the format nodal analysis technique and we'll have some problems that illustrate that, that, illustrate that situation. But here are the two equations that we could write down right away and then with just some elementary algebra we could rewrite them like this. So now we're at a point where we want to determine what is voltage V1 at node 1 and what is voltage V2 at node 2. So that's what we're going to do right now. Then once we know these voltages then of course we can determine the currents that go through these resistors and the direction of the current as well. So we need right now to work with these two equations because we have two unknowns to solve for V1 and V2 two equations two unknowns we should be able to handle that all we have to do right now is make some room okay so we have this equation 7 times V1 minus 1 times V2 equals 48 and then we had minus 1 times V1 plus 3 times V2 equals minus 24. And these are simple enough we don't have to use determinants to solve it but let's do that anyway. So here to solve this simultaneous equation using determinants first thing we do is for voltage V1 and V2 we have these column of numbers so we make a 2 by 2 determinant with these column numbers 7, negative 1, negative 1, 3. And we want to know what is the numerical value of this determinant. So we have 21 minus 1. So that determinant has a value of 20. Now to determine V1 what we do is we go back to our original equations here only this column of numbers 7 negative 1 we replace that with this column of numbers 48 minus 24 and we keep this column the V2 column, minus 1, 3. So V1 will equal the value of this determinant divided by 20. So here we have 48 times 3, that's 144, minus plus 24 divided by 120 so this is oh, this is just 20 down here in the denominator when you're doing a lot of simple number manipulations it's very easy to make a mistake that can throw your whole answer off so don't do as I did um, go through things carefully okay here we have 120 
divided by 20. So that's 6 volts. So V1 is equal to 6 volts. So this has a potential of plus 6 volts. Now let's determine it for V2. To determine V2, in this case, we replace the V2 column of numbers with this column. And now the V1 column stays unchanged. So we have 7, negative 1, and then 48, negative 24. like this. Now we have, this will be 7 times 24, 140 plus 28, that's minus 168. Minus negative 48. Divided by 20. So this is minus 168 plus positive 148. So up on top here we have, let's say minus 120. Divided by 20, so V2 is minus 6 volts. So let's go up here. This is minus 6 volts. Now let's determine our, the currents through these three different resistors. For here, this is at zero, because here it's grounded. This is at a negative voltage, so the current is going to be going in this direction. And the magnitude of the current will be the voltage divided by the resistance, so that will be one amp going upward. Here, this is a positive voltage. This is at zero volts. It's grounded, so this current is going down and it will be equal to 6 divided by 2 so that's 3 amps and now for this resistor the current is going to flow from a positive potential to a lower positive potential here it's an outright negative potential so the current across the resistor is going to be this voltage minus negative 6 divided by 12 and that equals 12 divided by 12 so we have 1 amp going in this direction. So that then completes the circuit and again we chose this as an example we had two nodes here, um, so we had two simultaneous equations to solve for, but really we wanted to use this problem to illustrate uh, the format approach for nodal analysis. And we'll have a couple more examples of it, including circuits where we have voltage sources, and if we cannot convert the voltage source to a current source, then we can't use the format approach for node analysis, but again, We'll deal with that in some future videos. Okay, that is it for this video. Come back, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.